Welcome back to Streamline Entertainment. It's your boy Marvin. I hope everyone's having a good day. Um, we're going to get straight into a video. And the video is by uh, Sadia um, Psychology. Um, she's very good. I've listened to a lot of her videos and it's interesting. And it's not... You can have friends who are gold diggers. You can have... Um, uh, you know, a boyfriend who's a gold digger. You can have a, a girlfriend who's a boy, uh, a gold digger. It's just signs to look out for. It's not personal towards anyone, but it's to be alert. Um, I think it's a very, very intelligent video. Let's get straight into it and we'll comment as we go. Now, the first thing I would say when a man tells me I'm dating a girl, I want to figure out if she's a gold digger or not. The first thing I ask is, what does she do for a living? Now, the reason I ask that is because majority of women who are looking for financial investment through a man tend not to have a stable career path. What I mean by this is that they have odd jobs here and there, the job is temporary, or they might have a career, they might have a really great career, but that career was funded by a man at some stage in her life. So maybe her ex-husband, maybe it was somebody, somebody, her career was funded for or created by a man or she doesn't have one. Now, if she doesn't have a career and she doesn't have a stable background in terms of what she, where, trajectory where she sees herself financially, that makes women feel incredibly unsafe. They feel unsafe. So what they'll do is they'll look for a man with that financial stability. So that's the first one. The second thing I always ask, again, no judgment, but I always ask if a man is trying to understand whether or not a woman is gold digger, I ask about her relationship with her father. Now, when a woman has a steady father figure, even if he has no money and he's not that particularly rich, there's an element of safety when you have a father figure in your life. Now, when there is no father figure and there is no financial security, then chances are she sees men as a form of financial safety. So she will be more prone to looking for the financial status of a man. The next thing I ask is, did she come from money? Now, if she has... It's, it's interesting. It's very, very interesting um, because my experience was um, I'd been um, seeing a girl for a woman, should I say, um, just over a year. And um, we, she lives abroad and I came and went quite regularly. And um, she had a job. Um, pretty stable job uh, as a um, as, as you know as a waitress at the end of that and also um, basically doing the book sometimes so she 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 was intelligent um, her father wasn't in, an, in 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 her life and always tended to borrow money off her when she started working at the end of the day so I thought things were great and then um, I met her parents and what I found was they were very, very money orientated because as soon as uh, basically we had our little holiday and then we went to see them in Udantani. And um, the first thing they did um, was take me shopping for food and I spent about maybe 40, 45 minutes. I didn't mind that, but I would rather have waited until we'd got home I think it was just a test at the end of the day, but she did, um, uh, my girlfriend at the time did actually turn around and say, oh, um, mum, this was about an hour later uh, when we got back uh, to a mum and dad's place, but um, you, you, they saw your face and you didn't seem happy driving back in the car. And I didn't say too much, but alarm bells did start ringing after that. Um, but the show goes on. But um, I'll explain the rest later what happened. She has really expensive taste and she likes really expensive things, but she didn't come from money. So it wasn't embedded from her childhood. It wasn't her father that was showing her this expensive lifestyle. Chances are it came from another man. A man showed her this lifestyle and now she's become addicted to this lifestyle. So look at her taste and then look at her childhood. If they are in line, she's not a gold digger. She just comes from money and is attracted to men with money. But if her childhood was very financially insecure, but her standards are very financially um, expensive, then chances are a man introduced her to that lifestyle and it's a lifestyle that she wants to keep. Now, 
This is a really big one, okay? If you want to know whether uh, your girlfriend is a gold digger or not, this one is really, really important. It's whether she's out of your league physically. Now, what I mean by that is, if this girl is considerably more attractive than you are, then chances are she's willing to compromise on physical attraction in order to get financial investment. There is a myth going around that women don't care about looks. They do, like anybody. Everybody cares about looks. Now, it doesn't mean we want the most handsome man in the world, but we want a man who has a similar level of attractiveness to us. Yeah, it doesn't have to be, he's not, doesn't have to be a superhero, but he's similar to us. Now, if she's a bombshell and you are not, then chances are she's willing to sacrifice a physical connection with you, but you've got to compensate it in financial investment. Now, what will happen in those cases, nine times out of ten, not always, what will happen is when she's considerably compromising in terms of looks, she's there for a financial investment and she's less likely to be physically loyal to you because humans do. So, interesting, very, very interesting um, case. So, my story, just going to go back to my story, very intelligent what Sadia says there. So, goes back home. Things were pretty good for four or five days. Um, I was probably given them, my missus at the time, 30 to 35 quid a day. Um, it could be shopping or for drinks or for something, which I didn't mind doing. And um, it was a um, songwriting festival, uh, which means that sometimes they needed money for... Um, uh, for temples and stuff like that uh, to go into the temple to give to the monks and uh, basically and family that's what it's all about which I didn't mind it it was it, it weren't a lot of money to me but after about three or four days the the father uh, basically house wasn't built um, it wasn't fully built and it needed, I probably needed about an extra 10, 15,000 pounds to actually complete it fully and doors, um, uh, you know, walls and different things. It was quite a lot poorer than what I thought, but they, they, they lived okay. They, they, they had a farm made off the land. They could afford, afford to run cars and vehicles, but... I think the problem was is that um, they were looking for um, it seemed like to me a big fish because Ploy started to say to me oh um, uh, are you serious about um, like building a house and but I was thinking but there's no protection for me if I finish the ploy and I and, and, and I gave um, a mum and dad money to finish the house. Where's my protection? I've got no protection. I'd rather build my own house. My, my, you know, I don't really want to live on my girlfriend at the time's doorstep. It's just not going to work. And um, so I let it roll. So I said, look, how much is it um, going to cost just inquiring at the end of the day? And I presume between ten and £15,000. But this was the first time I actually went um, uh, uh, back home and then um, the more the days went on, the more I spent more time at the hotel and she was with her parents more. And it just seems like we were getting separated. We weren't, uh, now we were back home and she had chores to do at her mum's house at the end of the day. It seemed like to me that things weren't the same as before, as, as the first couple of days. So one of the days, I think it was the sixth day, of um, my holiday in Udantani where I uh, basically um, we went to the temple saw family and then she, she dropped me back at the hotel and I didn't see her for about six seven hours and then I guess a text message to come back um, to the farm for something to eat and I didn't really want to go but I did but the atmosphere wasn't great between us at the end of the day it just seems like um, things uh, weren't that serious so she comes back to mine and then she says to me oh um that uh basically um that she wants money um from me for the fuel 
But I said, look, I've been giving you 30, 40 quid a day sometimes um, for food, for fuel. And you continue to asking me for money. I understand the way it works. But look, this was the first time I actually went back um, to the family. And I was going to give a, um, a whack, about 200 quid. Just say that, like, there you go. Um, at the end of it, they actually keep you going for a month, and I was willing to support her. But I'm not going to be sort of pushed into a corner where it's just about money. And then Ploy said to me, "Oh, at the end of the day, if you don't give me money, I'm going to call the police." So what I said is, "I said, well, I'm not going to give the money to you. I'm going to give it to your mum." And then I said, "If you're not happy, then go home." And she left in a strop. Phoned her father. Her father. Um, came and picked her up and uh, basically uh, that was it and then that evening I thought I just got an inkling it's just time for me to go this is not working this is a lot of pressure so what I did the hotel uh, manager has got a, his own taxi service and so he gave me um, a lift to another hotel which was near the airport because I didn't want her family to know where I was staying just in case things got out of hand or quite heated. But um, I'll finish the story in a minute. They all crave physical chemistry. So I'll meet men and I have clients who are 55 years old dating a girl that's 28 years old and wondering if she's a gold digger, wondering if she's loyal. A 28 year old is still going to be attracted to a 29 year old man. We don't have this magic lens where when a man turns 50 we still see him as attractive. We recognize what's attractive and what's not. We're just, some women are more attracted to financial stability, but they're still physically attracted to a 29 year old. So she might be physically disloyal. Don't delude yourself into thinking that she's physically attracted to you. She might be attracted to you as a package. She might become attracted to you. She might start loving the way you treat her and then that makes you more attractive. But if she didn't have financial insecurity, would she look at you? Would she date you? If the answer is yes, she was, would be attracted to me regardless, she's probably not a gold digger. But the answer is, mm, no, she would have to get really drunk to even talk to me. Then she might be there for a physical effect, for a financial reason. Another thing, another trick that gold diggers use is they pretend to have less money than they actually have. What they'll do is pretend that they're, well, they might not be pretending, but a common thread I see amongst men is that they'll say things like, her mom was in hospital, she needed money. Her mom's rent was due. Her mum was not feeling well. Her mum has no one. So what will happen is they target your emotional strings. They'll say, it's not for me. I'm not a gold digger. I don't want anything. But my mum needs it. My dad needs it. The rent is due. They, they pitch the family to you. So what will happen is you start to think that you are doing a very altruistic deed. But the mums can often be in on the act. Yeah, I've been in circumstances where I've seen... Very, very true. This is this is the same situation I was in. It, I just felt that I wasn't getting anything for my money going into it in returns. I needed some foundation for employee is to say, look, um, uh, let's get engaged. Or, um, but there was nothing. I said to her, if I'm going to put my money into the house I want to be part of it I want to have some assurance that I'm not going to be booted out at any stage and there was no assurances so with no insurances assurances I've got to say goodbye yes life's about chance yes she was a nice woman when we were just together just me and her things were good but what I realized is is that um her mother is very very money orientated and is quite strict, more than what Ploy is, I think. But Ploy listens um, to her mum, and her mum puts a lot of pressure on her at the end of the day. So I'd left, gone to a hotel, uh, texted her that I'd flown back, which I didn't because um, I said I'd flown back early, but I I'd had to wait um, another uh, uh, day before I flew. So I stayed at a hotel near the airport, which was really nice. Um, she did apologise, but I think the damage had been done. Um, uh, so I fly back to Bangkok. I still get messages. Or oh, um, this is from my mum. 
you um, owe me 50 quid for money for this. And I just blocked her. I thought, now nah, fuck off. At the end of the day, you're taking the piss now. I Every day I spent money on fuel and food and there was nothing to worry about. I was new to this and I was put up for the first holiday at a parent's yard, a parent yard to buy this, to buy that and to come up with so much money to finish the house. But like I said, there was no assurances so I was never going to do that. If, you know, I don't own anything, it's not going to happen. I know the score, what happens. I've been there long enough and lived in Thailand before to understand what's, what's, what goes on. So that was a no-no. So blocked her and I ended up um, blocking Ploy as well because I just think it was just, um, uh, um, they were just after money. And it's such a shame because like I said, I think Ploy was a nice woman, but she was influenced by her mother. Women say to their mom, look quick, pretend you've got a doctor's appointment. Just take a picture of you at the doctor's and the mom's like, all right, I got you. So you'll be surprised at how far it can go. Yeah, so don't be naive to these things. Absolutely help your, the love of your life's family. No worries. If you're in a financial position to do that, do it. But there's something in the culture of families which encourage a woman to take money from a man that is different. And their gold diggers are not, they're not uh, born, they're created. And usually they come from a family environment where the mother encourages her to use her beauty as a form of financial gains. Um, the other thing that is a really big red flag is that the physical affection is intermittent. So the sex is intermittent. What I mean by that is she'll give you lots of affection when there's a bill due. When there's a bill coming up and there is a price tag and some, something needs to be paid for, rent is due, something, your physical affection will be amazing. She'll dress up for you, she'll initiate, she'll be very kind, very tender. The moment that is paid for, or the moment you ask for her, to, you ask for some kind of taking back, the physical affection will disappear. It will feel like a chore. You will feel it. You have to initiate. She kind of avoids it. She pretends she doesn't want it, blah, blah, whatever. She's not well. So the physical affection is... Hi, guys. Thank you for tuning in for the rest of this video and for exclusive weekly content. So that was it. Look, um, I think it's life experience, um, like um, Sadia said. I think anybody can be a gold digger. Um, depending on what they want. But um, Sadia has gave some brilliant, brilliant signs in what to look after if you think you're being used. Uh, that's the end of the video. That's my experience anyway. But like I said, I've been going different places for a long time. Um, I, uh, my um, ex-girlfriend, we saw each other for um, six years. Uh, XX girlfriend should I say six years which was a long time so I had experience about living in abroad and supporting a family which was correct so I knew the difference between um, right and wrong but hey life goes on and um, you've got to be um, think smart at the end of the day if you think you're not getting a good deal out of it or something's not quite right then don't do it don't do it until you've checked things out correctly tell me what you think of the video uh, do subscribe and uh, make some points if you want about my story um, as well. But it's very interesting what um, Sadia has to say. She's extremely intelligent and speaks very well for herself. So do subscribe and see you again. Thanks, Marvin. Streamline Entertainment.